Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to show you how to set up your QNAT NAS for the first time. Now I talk about NAS a lot on this channel and I do take for granted sometimes that for many of you out there this is your first tentative steps into the world of network attached storage whereby I have already been using NAS for a lot of time and therefore I wanted to make sure that you know how to set up a QNAP NAS or if you're on the verge of buying one just how easy it is. So. The hardware installation has already been done in this case, but before you get to this point I'm on on the screen, what you needed to have done is to install three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard drives or SSD inside your QNAP NAS. So that's the hardware installation. And that's one of the most easy parts, it's in the, it's in the guide with the device, but it really is a case of popping the drives inside the click and load trays and putting them in your NAS. Once you turn the device on, somewhere between one minute to three minutes time, the device will beep or there'll be a, an announcement on the rear if you've got a speaker. And from that point, that means your device is ready to initialize. Now, either before then, or at this point, you need to head over to QNAP.com and look for an app called QFinder Pro. Alternatively, you can just Google QFinder Pro. Let's be honest, that's the easiest way to do it. And then download it onto your relevant platform, onto your PC, your Mac, your Linux-based system, your Chromebook, uh, and in some cases you can do it on mobile phone applications as well. Uh, while you're on this page, by the way, do check out some of the other applications that are available for your client devices, such as uh, my QNAP Cloud Connect, which is a, a client application to access your NAS remotely, as well as QSync for synchronization of all of your mobile and desktop devices, NetBack Rap Replicator, which is to synchronize different servers and QNAP NAT racks, and many more apps too. But once you've downloaded and installed it, it will appear. And the first time you get it open, this is what happens when you open the app. Scan your relevant environment, so click there, and scan your network environment for the NAS. In order for the NAS to appear on your network, you will have had to connect the NAS to your network. That is by connecting a LAN cable, an internet cable, RJ45, whatever you want to call it, from the NAS into your router or switch. Once you've done that and the PC or Mac that you're on and the NAS is using the same internet environment, network environment, whatever you want to call it, it will find the NAS on your network. It will also have that pop-up you just saw on screen saying, do, uh, server not configured, do you want to configure it? You can either click yes or look at this list and double click the NAS in question, which in this one is this 351. Ignore this other NAS that's on my environment. We're looking at the TS351, the new dual core NAS from QNAP. It's a three bay RAID 5 environment NAS. This says where it is on the environment and it hasn't been initialized. Click yes and it will open up the installation manager. So from here we can start the installation and it really is quick. I'm going to slow it down a bit for you here but really this setup can be done in less than 45 seconds. So the name of the NAS you can leave it by its default name or give it a different one. I'm going to call this TS351 test. Um, admin is the username, but you can change that later. And for now, you have to give it a password. I'm going to go with the Billy Basic password in lowercase. Double check that's still lowercase. And we can double check, there it is. And then we click next. From here, we set up the time frame of where it is. We can obviously use synchronization with internet time servers to get it done automatically. And then the IP. Now, with regard to setting up the IP, I'm going to really skim over this, but the difference between DHCP or dynamic um, um, domain network environments as opposed to static means that with a dynamic IP uh, or using DHCP, where the NAS lives on your network, that's all the devices that share the same network um, and the internet together, um, will fluctuate. So as devices power up and power down, their address on the environment will be dynamic and it will be the next one available or thereabouts. Alternatively, if you're running lots of backups, you're running lots of different software from the NAS, chances are for those to still continue to work, you need the IP to be static. That is to say, not change. And whenever you boot up the NAS, it will automatically always have this address if you set this. And this means if you're running multiple backup tools, if you're running lots of stuff to do with multimedia or editing or direct access to the NAS, that's where an IP address that's static is advised. But generally for most users, uh, a, a dynamic or DHCP IP address is absolutely fine. You can change that in the settings of the NAS. Next, the OS that uh, runs on the device can be tailored to be more better suited 
to different operation environments, or you can run it to all of them. So if you're running a Mac or a Linux platform and Windows, you can actually select one particular platform that you're running on to make it uh, more optimized for that environment, or click all three. So this means if you've got a NAS in an environment that's using Macs and Windows and Android devices and Linux this and all the rest of it and iOS phones and all the rest and Windows Mobile or something, you can make sure the NAS is configurable and compliant and indeed usable to the highest degree with all of those environments. If we click next, this is where we configure our disks, the disks that are inside. Now, for the sake of this video, because I will be doing another video about RAID configuration, I am going to configure the disks later. But I am going to skim over and show you, if you wanted to set up the drives now, to set up your RAID, you can do that right now if you choose. If you click configure disks now, move forward, you can see all the disks that are listed. And again, multi-tick volume and single thin volume and multi-volume, this is when you want to decide whether all the data is going to live as one giant RAID array, or if you want multiple RAIDs, or if you want one big RAID with multiple containers therein. By default, always go multi-volume because you never know what the future is going to hold. Make sure all the drives inside are ticked, and the drive, number of drives you tick will, depend, will change the RAID that you can select. So for example, this is a three hard drive NAS, but if we only use two of the drives, the only options we have are JBOD, just a bunch of drives, so loose drives, RAID 0 that combines all the drives together, or RAID 1 where we've got two drives that are mirrored and therefore all data that is read and written to the drives all the time and therefore if you lose one drive, all your data is safe. But in the case of if you're using more disks, such as in the case of the TS351, you can use three disks and it enables the option for RAID 5. And that means you lose one disk of capacity in the, for the sake of redundancy. So if you can afford to lose one disk drive of storage at all times and still have all of your data safe, do check out my video on what is RAID. But for now, uh, again, we're not gonna activate this, but moving forward, after that RAID 5, you can choose how big you want this volume to be. Now. Most people will click set to max, and that will use up all the available space in one giant rated volume. But if you intend to create more volumes later, you can play with this and set it to something more configurable. Likewise, if you want to enable snapshots, that's another reason why you won't want to set that to maximum, because with snapshot technology and images of all your storage to have as a form of fail safe to fall back on, you're not going to want to use all of the storage capacity because things like snapshots and versioning backups require storage outside of the volume you're backing up. I hope that makes sense. But for most people, set to max. Bytes per, per uh, inode, you're not really gonna have to muck with this unless you're dealing with very, very specific user case scenarios of file management, file um, backups, and file access and business capacity. For now, leave it to the default. There is an information bubble to tell you more. And of course, this is where you can choose whether you want to encrypt the entire volume. So that means the drives are, the data is only usable within the NAS itself and nowhere else. And it will encrypt that data even in the backups offsite. And you can set up a password for the encryption key that you can download to your local machine or just have it as a password on its own. Next. Bad block scan means that during the setting up of your RAID, the system will go through a bit-by-bit -bit analysis of all the hard drives or SSD inside to search for bad blocks. Because bad blocks are something that grow over time and can you know, result in bit rot and stuff like that. So just if you have extra time to set up your RAID, that's something you want to have at the beginning when setting up your NANs. And you can even set up a schedule where it will do periodic checks of bad blocks on your hard drives. So from this point, you could have clicked next and the device will continue to set up uh, in the rest of the steps the same. But for now, I'm not going to click next because we're going to leave RAID set up to another video. If we click back, this time we are not going to configure the disk drives. As I say, we're not going to configure them in this video. But if you wanted to configure them, configure them you could have clicked next. So in this case, we're going to configure them later. We're going to click next. And now it asks... During the installation, do we want multimedia applications for photos, video, music, and more, and of course, DLNA media server and codecs to be installed by default? Most of you will say yes for a home user, but in order to do that, you have to make sure you have a volume created for these 
um, applications to be installed on. So if you had set up a RAID volume or the beginning of a RAID volume, you could have clicked here, clicked yes, and it would have installed all those multimedia apps automatically. Alternatively, you can just install them one by one in the app store. Click next, and there's the device there, letting us know all the settings we've selected. We double check those to see if they're okay. Click apply. It will now wipe the hard drives and reconfigure them and completely initialize them as brand new drives. Click confirm. And there you go. The installation of your QNAP NAS is going to begin. Now, this, the amount of time this takes will depend, one, on the NAS, and two, the number of hard drives, and three, the capacity of said hard drives. If you're not setting up a RAID, this will be very quick indeed. If you're setting up a RAID, this would have taken a great deal longer. All QNAP NASs arrive with a version of the QTS software pre-installed on a bit of flash memory inside. But with newer versions coming out of the software of all the time, with add-ons and patches and updates to malware protection, ransomware protection and virus protection, as well as the notification center, it is recommended when you first set up your QNAP NAS, as soon as it boots up, it will check automatically if there is any new versions of the software available updates and it will invite you to update the firmware on your QNAP NAS. Again, this is completely automated and you can choose whether you want to participate in this or not. But right now, because we're not setting up a RAID, the setup of our new QNAP NAS will be considerably quicker. Had we chose to set up the RAID, particularly a RAID 5, this would have taken a great deal longer. In the next video, I will talk about how to set up a RAID and choosing the right RAID along with the advantages and disadvantages along with future videos about M2 SSD cache and more. But right now, what the QNAP is doing is setting up and deploying all of the internal background and processes that begin the QTS operation environment. So think when you boot Windows, when it has to go through Windows system host and go through all the directories and the repositories to begin Windows, that is what you're watching now. This is a first time setup and a deployment of the QTS software. Typically, if you power down the device or reboot the device, a reboot on a NAS such as the TS351, which has got a dual core Intel based CPU and four or two gig of DDR3L memory, it will take around four to five minutes to do a complete reboot from start to finish, which again, may seem a lot if you're comparing it with a computer, but you've got to remember as a server, it's got a lot going on in the background than it does in the foreground. Once we get onto the QTS operation environment and desktop, you'll be able to see that the full QTS 4.3.4 operating system on this QNAP NAS is ready to go. When we get to the desktop, I will show you quickly how to update, but apart from that, this is how you set up a QNAP NAS. Again, the steps we went through, this is the elongated version. I think this video is well over 10 minutes now, but if you do this and you want everything by default, you can have a QNAP NAS, including drive installation, set up and ready to go inside 15 minutes very easily indeed. Um, what I'm going to do now, because it's not quite done yet, I'm just going to fast forward the video to where we are ready to set up. So I'll see you at the desktop. Okay, it's completed. So now as you can see, it's finished the installation and set up there. And now we can go directly into the NAS management. Before I click go to the NAS management, it is worth reminding you that in future, if you need to get into your NAS, uh, what you need to do is either one, remember that IP from earlier, if you did a static IP or do a quick scan, two, use that QFinder application from earlier. And if you do a rescan, it will find the NAS again, but this time it will be ready. So you once again, just double click and it'll go straight into the NAS. Three, use the mobile phone application for iOS or Android called, um, um, I think it's Finder, um, or that one there, the NAS management tool. Or finally, install the client application for Mac or Windows systems that lets you go directly onto a folder level version of your NAS. But for now, now we've set up our NAS for the first time, let's go to the NAS management. From here, we have to log in with the identity we created earlier. Go into here, we can click Remember Me or Secure Login if you've got those settings enabled. And this will make our way into the desktop of your QNAP NAS. Now again, as soon as you boot it up for the first time, it will invite you to know what some of the features and functionality are, such as the control panel, the application center to install the apps. Remember, you still need to set up your RAID and volume first. And you can control different account settings at the top. 
As mentioned, as soon as you boot the device for the first time, it will search for updates. It lets us know right now there is a brand new update for this system and I won't update this yet. But just to let you know, it will check every time or you can set it up that it never checks or checks periodically. But for now, I will show you how to update, but not right this second, I'll come to that in a bit. Also, when you set up the NAS for the first time, each of these windows is inviting you to set up the QNAP for the first time. I know it looks like a bit of a bombardment, but if you've never used a NAS, you never used a NAS before, this is how you can dictate and know how to set it up for the first time. This will tell you the different kinds of RAID, the different kinds of volume, and I will talk about those in the next video. And from here, you set up your RAID, your volume, that sort of thing. And again, I'll save that for the next video. Um, in the help center, it will give you lots of information about how to use the NAS typically. And there's loads of tutorials and guides uh, both available here and online from QNAP and indeed from Span TV, Span.com, NAS Compares and more. Look at that lovely plug. And finally, if you want to get licenses for stuff, a little bit professional, but we'll talk about these in a different video later too. Now, here's a desktop interface and now I'm going to show you how to check for updates. Over here, we've got the control panel. You head over to the control panel and from here, you want to look at firmware update. Click in here and you can check for a new update and here is how you update your NAS to the latest version of the OS. Click check for update, it found the update. It says it's this version here and if it needs to restart, which it almost certainly will, you can say whether you want it to or leave it because if you're using the NAS, you might not want it to auto update. Click OK. There's the notes. The release notes about it, all the different things the device will be able to do and what it's adding or removing and the change logs, known issues that might be being changed on the update, things that are being fixed or added are all available here. Click continue and that's it, we're now firmware updating. Now the system's going to restart and when it does we will be at the new freshly updated version of our QNAP NAS, the TS351 Plus. In the next video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a RAID for the first time. I'm going to be setting up a RAID 5 on this self-same NAS. Afterwards, I'm going to show you what happens when one of your drives dies. And finally, I'm going to show you the read and write speeds that you get both before the RAID falls apart and what happens when the RAID is falling apart if one of your drives dies and how you don't lose access to your data even though you lose one of your drives. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this and want to learn more. Buy your NAS from the guys at Span.com. Learn about NAS from NASCompares.com and send me a message if you've got any questions via Twitter at RobbieOnTheTube. Thanks for watching.